I recently had the privilege of spending several days with a group of pre-med advisors. What I learned from the experience surprised me. Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com Most medical school admissions experts would tell you that pre-med advisors rarely give good advice. But what surprised me was not just how bad the advice was, but also how confident they were in said advice. Truly the Dunning-Kruger effect at play. I was inspired to make this video after spending time with them because, to be frank, I found myself quite uncomfortable by the fact pre-meds were being given such misleading information. I'm committed to providing pre-meds with the most accurate, unbiased, and honest guidance. It's simply the right thing to do. I'll be the first to admit, however, that they do have utility. Every university has nuances with schedule and courses, including which courses are impacted and therefore how to navigate the class enrollment process most effectively. For this reason, pre-med advisors are an important resource in making sure you graduate on time and complete your degree requirements and pre-med prerequisite courses. But beyond that, they are unqualified to provide accurate or meaningful pre-med advice. You'd be far more knowledgeable just by watching the free YouTube videos on this channel or reading the free blog posts on our website. That's not an exaggeration. Pre-med advisors may say, don't major in biology because it's too common. I say it's more complicated than that, and there's pros and cons ultimately making for a highly personal decision. I have a video on that with data supporting my conclusions. They say Caribbean isn't a bad option, but that's because they don't understand the nuanced pros and cons. They're easily swayed by a few presentations and an all-expenses-paid trip to a tropical island, which I spoke about on my other channel. It seems like a relatively simple job for pre-med advisors. Help their pre-med students get into medical school. So where does it all go wrong? To be a pre-med advisor, you don't receive any formal training. Turns out it's just on-the-job training. No formal degree, no comprehensive training, no need for a science or statistics or education background. Majored in art history? Fantastic! You can be a pre-med advisor. A bachelor's degree is all that's necessary. Something like a master's in education is optional, but from my experience, this does not necessarily improve the quality of advice. For example, one advisor informed me that every student she met with, she tried to steer them away from biology. After all, she said it's far too common and she wants her students to stand out from the rest. This overly simplistic interpretation is ultimately harmful. There are some students who should pursue biology or similar life science majors, and others who should not. Pre-med advisors don't have experience with pre-med coursework. They weren't pre-med themselves. They didn't apply to medical school. I asked one of the pre-med advisors about how he advises students when going to osteopathic medical schools. He focuses on two aspects. First, what specialty does the pre-med want to pursue? And second, are there any DOs in that specialty? This advisor pulls up findado.com to look up specialties and see if there are any DOs in that field. Look, we found a DO plastic surgeon! If you want to be a plastic surgeon, you can do it through a DO program. Again, this is concerning for a few reasons. First, over 50% of first-year medical students will change their intended specialty by the time they graduate. I was one of them, initially planning on pediatric gastroenterology and changing gears completely to reconstructive plastic surgery. Basing application decisions off of what specialty you think you want to pursue as a pre-med is premature. Second, just because there are a few osteopathic plastic surgeons does not mean that an aspiring future plastic surgeon should choose an osteopathic medical school. This is the survivorship bias at play. It's not impossible, but it's much more difficult to go into plastics and several other competitive fields going the DO route over the MD route. To most effectively guide pre-meds on their various options and what would be the best fit for them, it's important to provide evidence-based guidance, and doing so requires at least understanding certain statistics principles. Unfortunately, there's no statistics education requirement to be a pre-med advisor. The decision of where to go to medical school, whether USMD, DO, or Caribbean, in large part is a function of what options you'll have when you graduate medical school. Your goal isn't just to get into medical school, it's also to become a practicing doctor in a specialty you chose rather than a specialty you were forced into. That relies on you being able to match into a residency program for the specialty you are interested in. Some pre-med advisors believe that getting into a competitive specialty, such as neurosurgery or plastic surgery, is competitive 
for everyone, regardless of whether they are at a US or Caribbean program. Therefore, it shouldn't matter whether you go Caribbean or US if you're focusing on something highly competitive, right? Obviously, that's shaky logic. It's significantly more difficult to match into those specialties if one attends a Caribbean school. Just look at the data and match lists, or speak with someone with residency admissions committee experience, like our team at Med School Insiders. To further prove the point, the average step scores to match into any of these specialties from a Caribbean school are higher than the average step scores from students graduating from US schools by a substantial margin. A pre-med advisor objected to this line of reasoning and informed me that perhaps the tiny percentage of students matching into competitive specialties is just due to varying interests. Maybe the thousands of graduating medical students from this particular medical school were simply not interested in such competitive specialties. Denying the fact that it is significantly more challenging to match into certain specialties from DO or Caribbean schools would be very dangerous advice to give a pre-med, as this is often a major contributor in limiting them from successfully matching into more competitive specialties. Caribbean medical schools often invite pre-med advisors to their campus. They fly them out, wine and dine them, put them in a nice beachfront hotel, give them tours, and try to impress them with their program with the hope that these pre-med advisors will promote their program to their students. At one Caribbean medical school, they do these visits four to five times per year, and despite it costing several thousands of dollars per advisor, it's still highly profitable. Why? Because pre-med advisors are easily convinced. Because of their minimal understanding of the medical training process and lack of education in statistics, pre-med advisors are easy to trick when the data doesn't quite add up. When I asked a pre-med advisor how she decides between suggesting Caribbean versus DO programs to her students, she said she's not sure because all her doctor colleagues say DO is better, but she has visited several Caribbean programs and she's really impressed. Some of her own personal doctors are Caribbean trained and she likes them, so that's more reason in her mind, to promote these programs. These are not valid considerations when choosing the various medical school paths. In medical school, it's drilled into our heads that you should not take free gifts from pharmaceutical companies. As Caldini talks about in his widely acclaimed book, Influence, the reciprocity rule acts subconsciously and can influence treatment decisions. For example, doctors are more likely to prescribe the medication from the drug company that's providing them with the free gifts. In a previous video on my other channel, I outlined the specific instances from my recent trip to a Caribbean medical school where the presented numbers didn't add up and how the program was able to fool pre-med advisors. Link in the description. I seek to provide as much free value and guidance to pre-meds on this YouTube channel and on our blog. If you want to dive deeper, we have courses and services on the Med School Insiders website that will actually help you become the doctor you've always wanted to be. No ignorance or foolish thinking to cloud our judgment. We're a company created by physicians and run by physicians like me who have gone through the process, served on medical school admissions committees, and understand all the nuances and the ins and outs of the process. Check out our pre-med roadmap to medical school acceptance course for a highly comprehensive A to Z guide for pre-meds or work one-on-one -on -one with a top physician for more personalized help. Visit medschoolinsiders.com to learn more and schedule your free 15-minute consultation today. If you liked this video, let us know with a thumbs up, but if you are a pre-med advisor and were not a fan, go ahead and leave a thumbs down so I know how many of you are watching my channel. For more high-yield videos that cut through the noise and give it to you straight, make sure you are subscribed. Much love to you all, and I will see you guys in that next one.